Hey everyone, I'm Brad Chmielewski, and this is Shatter the Vein. Uh, hopefully everyone has gotten some games in. I know Super Evil Megacorp had some issues with the servers going down, so uh, hopefully everyone was able to get into the game now, play some Black Feather, because that dropped today, patch 1.11, 1 uh, and that's why I'm back. I'm back with another episode. Uh, I like to do these recap episodes or these patch rundown episodes where we go over all the notes, grab uh, some other people who've maybe had a chance to play these new heroes, these new balance changes, so we can talk to it, talk through it, give you a good, uh, our best guesses of what we're going to see happen. Uh, so this week I have Josh and Dragonborn from uh, Vertigo. We're so three of us on this episode. Uh, we did this a couple weeks ago with the Halcyon Hammers. Uh, a lot of fun. Good like round table discussion on this patch. So uh, let's jump into it. Let's get into the patch 1.11 rundown. Shatter the Vein, a podcast about vain glory. This is the 61st episode of Shadow of the Vein. My name is Brad Chmielewski, and this is a podcast all about Vainglory. Uh, every week we're usually talking about the news, gameplay, game tips, just running through everything Vainglory related. But then Super Evil once a month, and in this case twice a month, drops a new patch on me. And you know what? I've got to deliver a new episode, run down this patch, go over all the updates, and what better people to bring on than people have who've been playing the game forever and who have had a chance to try some of these changes a little bit and have a good insight on some of the stuff they're going to see or we might see coming up. So uh, welcome, Josh and Dragonborn, once again. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me again. Uh, for people who haven't uh, seen you or heard you before, or checked out streams, you want to introduce yourself, uh, give them the lowdown on Vertigo, all that good stuff. Well, I'm a streamer, uh, as you are, Brad. I stream mostly on Camcord now uh, at camcord.com uh, slash live slash Dragonborn. And you can follow me on Twitter at BG Dragonborn. And I'm a member of Team Vertigo and was started Vertigo when Josh one day said, hey, you want to be a part of the guild? Nice. <laughs> and I'm Josh. Uh, a lot of people might not know who I am, but I am the creator of Team Vertigo. Uh, we started back in February, around February and January ish, and we've grown since then. Nice. Yeah, you guys have a pretty, a very active band chat that I know I'm in, and a lot of people in the community are in, and people like, uh, they, everyone has good things to say about that. It just seems like a very fun place to hang out. It is, and it's, uh, it was kind of a, uh... We stumbled upon it, I don't want to say deliberately. Some of it was deliberate, but some of it was accidental about how we wanted it because originally we were a casual guild, mm -hmm. and we realized quickly that that was just not feasible. Like, who do you let in? Who do you not let in? Yeah. You know, How do you become competitive and also have casual? So the idea was, well, what if we have an open community that all the casual players can come and hang out with, but then yet we can still keep our team and our core members focused on objectives like competitive play? Right, and some of those casual people are able to play with you guys and feel like a, a, a part of the guild, but not really in the guild. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. It's something that you don't see in MOBA communities, something so open like that. Yeah, that's nice. And then you guys have like a crazy awesome team that has been wrecking in VIPL, or in the VGL right now, not the VIPL, the VGL, on their way to VIPL. I'm sure you guys hope so. <laughs> hope so. Oh, we do. They they've been good. I mean, Josh and I uh, are are like totally ecstatic. Like there's yeah. no <laughs> words to say. And it's it's crazy because I don't think if you had asked us in February that we would have a team that was you know one of the best, one of the top eight teams in the country. Uh -huh. um, and you can argue like based on skill tier if that all stacks up. But at the end of the day, we were uh, we were very very fortunate to. To be able to play some incredible matches on stream, um, I just rewatched them today. Like that's okay. how they are. <laughs> I don't know. Did you get? Did you get to watch them? The uh, the HH match. Um, I didn't watch that one. I think I. Oh, uh, you've got to watch. Need it. to go back and watch. Okay. <laughs> got to watch it. It's good. You know, the first one was not not for us so much, but the second okay. one was such a close match. It was so you know really really it's funny because you know they ranked hh9 and us eight but it was almost like we were two eight seeds because we were so 
close in skill, I felt. And, okay. and maybe the first game you didn't see that so much. But the second and third game, you could tell just very, very balanced as far as, like, play. And we just we just eked it out just by a small margin, I feel. But it was really good. Okay, yeah. I guess I'm going to have to go back and watch those games. There's uh, the, f- fi- the, sem- what, the semifinals and finals are this weekend? Yes. All right. And then, uh, then the following weekend are these live finals that they are not a part of this VGL thing. They like they took the seeding from it, but they don't have any impact on like the outcome of the finals. They're kind of like almost a show match, right? right. It's so. like points. I mean, it's like this. These are the so that's one thing that confused me too. Was like these are qualifiers. This whole thing is qualifiers for points that you can go to the VGL. Yeah. But, that's pretty awesome. So everyone should be watching those games and checking out their teams. And uh, you guys are your team's going to be on stage there in December with those brand new jerseys, right? You guys got you guys are sporting them. <laughs> yes, uh, these jerseys they're amazing. I love them. <laughs> <laughs> like, love they feel so great. And uh, I really do want to give a shout out to our sponsor band, who has uh, helped us a lot. Nice. When it comes to retrieving these jerseys and, you know, giving us an app that can eff- let us effectively manage a guild and a team. So I appreciate right. them so much. Nice. Awesome. And Vane Shame, too. He designed those, right? <laughs> Can't forget that, man. I love Vane Shame. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're lucky that he helped us from the get-go. I mean, everything, all the really cool – well, there's two people, one Vane Shame who did most of it. And then, of course, actually the – the, the Team Vertigo logo that we've really started to use, it was actually developed by just a designer kid, just Tesna. His, uh, he has a oh, website, cool. and he was just like, hey, I want to design your logo, and he did. And um, he's not as active in the community anymore, but he's so excited that we're using his logo and we're putting it on shirts. And so. Yeah. No, that's fun to see anything when, you know, as a designer as well, when you see your stuff on TV or on shirts or anywhere, it's like, oh, man, like, that's off my computer. That's amazing. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, awesome. Well, all right. Enough of that. We got to get into this 1.1 patch. Uh, it's a lot of fun stuff. So let's dive in. Vain Glory News. Uh, I think the first thing we got to talk about is Blackfeather. He's right at the top. He's the forefront of this patch. Uh, uh, we'll quickly go over his abilities and then we'll kind of talk through them a little bit. Uh, so if you want to pick up Black Feather, he's early access right now. Uh, so that means he's only unlockable with ice for the first seven days. And after that, he'll be available for ice and glory to anyone out there. So his heroic perk is called Heartthrob. Uh, and this uh, basically builds stacks on the enemies. It applies stacks up to uh, five stacks, I believe, to uh, heroes and enemies. And then as he does, any anytime stacks are added or refreshed, Blackfeather deals bonus crystal damage to each stack of Heartthrob already on the target. So this is our first time we're seeing stack abilities in uh, Vanglory. Other MOBAs, League of Legends, and Heroes of the Storm, a lot of them have abilities that can stack. And you, if three of them happen, like they're stunned or they're slowed. Uh, so... This is kind of interesting. What do you guys think about this uh, stacking mechanic? I think it's pretty cool. It's a lot like Cruel, um, although Cruel's stacking is specific to a certain ability. Yeah. Although his stacks does does slow or you know kind of nerf uh, enemies' uh, damage. So it, in a sense, it's very similar to how Cruel works. Okay. Um, but it, this is like his all his abilities work off this heartthrob. Yeah. So it's pretty neat. Um, I do like the stacking mechanic. It's a neat thing that every makes every champion very unique. So hopefully we'll see more of this moving forward. But it does also get confusing sometimes as you have like hearts and you have cruel smite, and then all of a sudden you have uh, bananas on somebody else, and you just have like all these other icons. It could get messy quickly, but well, I'm sure they'll make sure it doesn't happen that way. <laughs> Yeah, but they also did something unique that we kind of have seen them going back and forth with, like with the pedal or with an Arden or Rona, is they they created a, a different energy system altogether. And I feel like they do this at times when they feel that cooldown reduction, uh, like energy regen that you get from Clockworks is just too strong. 
Yeah. And it's something they're trying to prevent because, you know, he's capped at 100 and his, his abilities use 50 to 60 of this energy. They use almost half of it. And you can imagine that they're trying to make sure that, you know, prevent people from, you know, stacking these abilities because they're very, very powerful when used in a, in a chain of events. Yeah, because all of his abilities are crazy short cooldown too. So if he did have that lot of cooldown on everything, and be like, oh my gosh, this is nuts. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so his A ability is called Faint of Heart. So Black Feather lunges at a target and does a basic attack. And then for the next four seconds, uh, the target leaves behind like this rose trail, they're calling it. And this grants Black Feather and his allies movement speed uh, just as they're chasing anybody. Uh, this is very cool to see and I think people will quickly understand like oh if I stay in this path it's like a it's just gonna carry me we're gonna be able to chase these people down black feather can kind of jump in there get the faint of heart off and then the other rest of the team if he can't clean them up can kind of catch up and clean up as well uh, especially if like a Catherine can come in there with her uh, her stun and like she's sped up she can just get in there and get the stun even quicker now <laughs> right uh, and then if you overdrive this ability, the Rose Trail also makes Blackfeather and his allies unslowable. Uh, that is really interesting, and it makes a lot of sense because he's, what, best friends with Finn? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Finn can't be stunned, so this is something the two of them kind of, you know, go together with. Yeah, and when they say unslowable, I'm just wondering if it's applying to things like Frostburn or if it's also applying to Cruel Slow, like all slows. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to test it. I don't think anyone has gone through and verified that every single slow does work. I'm sure it's intended to. Right. But that's incredible because chasing uh, you see that a lot when you're chasing a hero that someone will try, like a tank will try to slow you, stun you, or, or to Frostburn you, or... Uh, shiver steal you so you don't get to that carry because the carry is usually really really low and right. that one more stun or one more shot from a ringo will will finish the deal and so this is pretty awesome yeah uh i also like the fact that you have uh, that type of ability on an assassin you know where yeah assassins they usually deal damage 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 and they don't really have a a, a ability that can help the whole team in a sense, that's not helping just themselves. So, I'm right. glad to see that. Yeah, they're usually very selfish characters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's why people hate, you know, Taka players. And in most assassin people, it's like, you're just a jerk that's out for themselves. We won the game, but you are a jerk. <laughs> Yeah, and it's weird that Super Eva Megacorp made a point to say that he's an assassin but can be a crystal utility. And it, I, I feel like they do this with heroes where other games and other MOBAs don't, is they, they try to make a hero so flexible and so will like so that you can build anything on him and it's interesting versus such a focused build. And, yeah. you know, we've seen it start to change with, like, boxes or with, like, Celeste and even sometimes with Scarf where it's really only one good build to build. Like, that's really the only way you can go. But then you see them come around again and then create a Black Feather, which is just, I feel like you're going to see build any item you can imagine. Like, it's just going to work somehow. Yeah, so you don't have to worry about getting yelled at for building a certain item on him. You're like, ah, I think it works. <laughs> Uh, his B ability is called on point or on point and black feather pierces all enemies in a line damaging them and applying a slow uh, the duration of slow is increased for each stack of heartthrob on a target uh, so again uh, that heartthrob his heroic perk coming into effect here on one of his abilities uh, and this is this is a pretty long range like uh, it, when you see it in the circle to use it it's like oh my gosh I can hit him that far away uh, and so this is just kind of he's taking advantage of that giant sword and just piercing enemies yes. and so if he can slow him down with that uh, slow and then he speeds up his allies with the faint of heart like man that's just like two great utility items right there in his abilities yes the, he has a lot a lot of cc if you want to say he has a lot of it um and it's just really interesting. Like, I want to see how this plays out because you've seen him in the lane. Not so much in the jungle, but I feel like he is actually going to be like a, I want to say, a Daggio where he can play every single, okay. every single, you know, position. And I, 
it's just a lot. Like, I mean, uh, his B-ability often resembles Jules' B-ability, then mm-hmm. off to the poke, you know. Yeah. And then the fact that it's also a slow, like, it's just crazy. Uh-huh. Yeah, this is a good point that it's kind of like Jules' ability, and I do like that they're keeping that on the B-ability, so if you do go back and forth between those two heroes, you kind of understand, like, oh, my second ability, I understand, like, that's my, that's my poke that, like, shoots mm-hmm. out and does damage nice yeah it is hard i don't know if you've gotten a chance to play it brad though but it's really hard to nail that on point like when they're saying on point they're like me like right on point. <laughs> you can't be off by uh, at like any dis any air at all because uh you will miss and i've yeah. actually was practicing just trying to last hit with it and there were a lot of times and i don't even know if this was a bug or not where i swore i was right on point and i wasn't i missed the minion and it didn't do damage at all so it's okay. definitely something that's going to require skill the the a and the c ability require very little skill they're very easy to execute but that b ability is challenging okay yeah um yeah you mentioned his c ability or his ultimate it's called Rose Offensive, and what Blackfeather cuts through his opponents, uh, basic attacking all enemies in his path during a dash. And during this, uh, Blackfeather is immune to negative effects and takes greatly reduced damage. And you get two charges of this. So I think the, the idea is a lot of the time to use this to catch up and then maybe get out or use both, uh, both times to like catch them, like close that gap and then close it again and like just assassinate them <laughs> right yeah definitely definitely great for chasing but really great for getting away i know when i tested it in the beta it was it was a lot there were a lot of walls you could get through you okay. could get through um uh, into the sanctuary through it at one of the wall points there you could get through over the um uh, uh the gold mine barrier the wall right there so it that gives him a lot of flexibility and you know a lot of people are saying as far as his strength He's a little squishy at first, so he's really, really hard to use and farm. But once you get him fed, he is really, really strong, and that mobility makes him a lot like a Vox. And you know, we all know how deadly Vox gets once he gets farmed, and and we all know how hard it took Super of a Mega Corp to like keep nerfing him till he got to a point where he was balanced. But I think because of how they did the energy in this uh, in this hero and how they've managed the cooldowns, where yeah, you got short cooldowns, but they're they're starved on energy if you don't auto attack for several times in between that even his ultimate, which is really strong, probably one of the best um, uh, lane ultimates I've seen, His, if you can get a decent amount of attack damage on him, he will clear faster than anybody else in the lane. Okay. It's really incredible. I've seen him clear up to... There's no limit to how many he clears because it's splash damage, but I've seen him clear... I've, I've practiced he's cleared up to 13 minions at one time, and that's oh, really, really, really high. But that grant, that's with a lot of weapon damage. Right, yeah. Huh. So is that how you, in the couple of games you did get to play him, were you building him mostly weapon, or did you just kind of, just tr- trying out some different things? Well, I know for when, when I first sort of, his, when I read his C ability and read it out, and I was very interested because he did basic attacks for his C ability. Yeah. And so that means it's weapon in a way. And it's crystal in a way, correct? If I'm not mistaken. Now, that being said, uh, weapon weapon works, and crystal works. Like I I have seen it. So where he's good on both of them. And uh-huh. So like especially with Adagio with his B, uh, with his uh, buff. Buffs uh, people, yeah. With the basic attack damage and with uh, his ult, it's just kind of crazy. So on weapon. Yeah, I think uh, yeah, I kind of like the crystal idea, and I think that's because I play a lot of Rome support characters. So, you know, adding that uh, utility to your team is something that I'm very accustomed to. Even with uh, Kashka, you know, you usually maybe build the fountain or even the crucible, and you're kind of helping out your team. Also, you're saving your own ass, but you're <laughs> adding some support items as well. Uh, so, I, yeah, I think the crystal can be a lot of fun to play, uh, but you won't probably get as many kills that you would with the weapon yeah i mean i one thing i have seen is a lot of the high elo players really love the crystal build um they love it because the poke from his b ability is just annoying it's like it's like having a a thunderstrike crit on you or having a a a, a heliogenesis drop on you it's just it's annoying and it seems to always be there if you can hit it (laughs) 
But what when it comes to the weapon damage, the reason I feel weapons probably going to rule or probably win out on the hearts of many uh, who play uh, Black Feather is that the you can really there's a lot of things with basic attack that stack like breaking point and then there's shiver steel mm -hmm. and um, what I found in my testing is is once you've gotten three strong uh, weapon items on Black Feather and then a lot of defense. You can just use his A and his C over and over again, and he's just dealing a ton of damage, and he's really, really fast. Um, you know, he's not poking, but he's one who can kind of get in like Vox and just tear everything up real quick and then get out of there. Um, he does, though, have to be a lot closer to his enemy uh, than Vox does, but once he's there and stacking that breaking point, he stacks very fast. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I think the breaking point's going to be a great item on him, yeah. Uh, he he's not going to be, I think, as tricky to learn and maybe master as Sky has been. But I think learning how to like manage your shields and knowing the right time to engage and everything's going to be important with him. I, I feel bad for everyone that uh, you know wanted to try him out today, and now the servers are having issues, and we're here talking about him and you know, gushing all over him, uh, and everyone out there just has to wait another day almost. <laughs> Super soon, though. I mean, it should be up and running, hopefully. They, I always can count on the devs. They work hard. Mm -hmm. Work really hard. Uh, so you guys are probably going to pick them up, I'm, I'm sure, give them a try. Are you, do you, you going to see a good team comp with them? What do you see working with them? Like uh, the Daggio, Josh, you mentioned, you know, buffing him. Uh, does he need another? Uh, does he need, like, a Finn there? Does he need his buddy? <laughs> So I did play a game just today with him and Finn uh, mm -hmm. in the beta, and there is some synergy there, and Finn does a lot of damage, and when Finn can get that slow, it's a lot. But Finn's still really, really, really slow. I'm curious to see if Tier 3 boots changes how you build Finn, if you can help that speed boost, and then maybe sprinting a lot more. But I, I, there's definitely a lot of da damage coming out with both of them, and He's pretty, they're both, uh, you know, he's very squishy, Blackfeather is. So having Finn, who's really tanky early game, is really a good ba uh, balance. But uh -huh. yeah, Adagio is really good with him. And then, of course, right now you just see a lot of people running Arden still. And I don't know if that's going to change this update. Right. And uh, I guess the good part about uh, being against the Arden, you got that Rose offensive. You can dash through, so you don't have to worry about it. But if he's on your team, that team's stuck there, and you're just you know, Rose offensive through them, doing all this area <laughs> effect damage, and it's like, yeah, goodbye. Yeah, I uh, I played with uh, a, a Black Feather earlier today as well, and I was playing Jewel. And actually, I mean, the pokes, like, they get annoying. <laughs> like, um, we were poking away at the enemy team, and, like, they just couldn't find the good positioning. Okay. So I, so I feel like poking, the poke, strategy i want to call it with jewel in the jungle or maybe black feather in the lane maybe jewel lane in black feather in the jungle depending on okay. you know, who you're running as support i feel like that could actually really work work well mm -hmm. i could see him and sky being a very frustrating <sighs> people to go against because you can never like just lock either one down or jump and hear me jumping all over the place like just just stop <laughs> i uh i also think uh Adagio, when I say Adagio, I, I think that carry Adagio is actually not viable with his uh, buff okay. or his A ability. So I think even like a crystal Adagio in the lane and like a uh, jungle weapon, Blackfeather, I feel like that would be pretty, pretty OP right there. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, speaking of these changes to some of these characters, let's jump into the, the balance changes and go over uh, some of these and we'll maybe we'll come back to Blackfeather here and see what could be working with them. Uh, but first on the list was Sky. Uh, so I was starting to see more and more Skies in the game. People are finally starting to get the hang of her. Uh, and sh man, good Skies, it's like, Jesus Christ, like, how do you always hit me with your forward barrage? <laughs> uh, but so she had a, she had a few changes. Uh, basically, she had like some damage kind of reduced on most of her abilities. Uh, she got the bug fixed on forward barrage where it was not showing the true distance, which was pretty annoying. Um, I think on, on both fronts, just not knowing exactly how far that was going. Especially uh, on the other end of it. <laughs> yeah. 
Because, yeah, if you're right on the outside or on the side, yeah. It's there. (laughs) Uh, The weapon... uh, weapon damage on the forward barrage can now crit uh, so that's going to be interesting i think they're trying to give her a little more power in her weapon because you were seeing a lot of people going crystal with her um and she now deals 70 percent damage to objectives i think that's uh the forward barrage was it doing damage before do you guys know or is this uh, it was doing oh, it. oh <laughs> sky sky was one, sky and rona the both of them were really fast at taking down kraken it seems like there's always that one hero that yeah. that is really fast it was jewel before then it was sky and a lot of that has to deal with that typically until t- 1.10 crystal damage dealing heroes always deal a lot more damage to uh, kraken than weapon damage because there was a mid- there was actually a a, a, a mitigation that was occurred that was calculated um, on weapon damage, uh, basic attacks to crack. And whereas crystal, there is no mitigating uh, factor. Okay. So, but you're starting to see that Super of AmeriCorp is really trying to say, okay, if we notice this is a little too strong, this is a little too fast, we're going to turn it down just a notch for each hero kind of individually. Yeah. So okay. every hero affects Kraken differently now. Okay. So, um, so that objective taking may be a little different and, not so nuts on Sky. <laughs> um, her Surrey Strike, which is her B ability, uh, I think the biggest change on this is targets that go into bushes and out of visions now maintain their lock on. Uh, so if you're playing Sky, you knew like if someone ducked in a bush or playing against Sky, you could duck in a bush and that lockdown would disappear and she couldn't jump or close any gaps. To And then the the Surrey Strike wouldn't even hit you. So this is kind of like a big change for her, and I think it's going to make her a little better too. Yeah, this is like, this is really going to be a big deal, I think. Yes. Like, they, they nerfed her a little bit, but that's a huge deal because uh, trying to get away from Sky was hard to begin with. Yep. Now it's going to be just as hard, harder. <laughs> you, uh, the Taka concept, like, I don't even know where he's at. Like, can he still see me? Am I away? Am I safe? You don't even know anymore. Like, I mean, especially with that, like, when you get in a bush, that should be, like, your safe haven. You know what I'm saying? For just a little tiny bit of time. <laughs> That's gone now. And uh, she's going to be very able because she's always been a g- good gap closer. And I feel sure, like yeah. this is just going to, you know, make it all better. Mm-hmm. And then her ultimate uh, death from above, this was doing ridiculous amounts of damage. Like, you could take out turrets, you could, like, take out Kraken. Enemies would just melt completely from death from above. Because that uh, that crystal power scaling uh, was ridiculous. It was at, like, what, plus 170%, and they dropped that down to 50% of your CP. So, thank God. Like, if, if you got locked down by a Sky or a Catherine Sky, she'd drop her ultimate. You were you were gone. Ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, and 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 it happened so much, and you could always count on it like happening multiple times, uh, even in a fight. Um, it's still strong though, and the slow is r- so annoying. It's one of the most yeah. annoying slows because you, if it's in a bush, you don't even see it half the time. And but I think that what they're trying to say is, well, we like that, we like the utility purpose of it, but we just don't like all that damage. Right, so I think it's going to be used more as zoning. It's still going to pick up those kills, but it's more going to be zone people out, slow them, keep them, keep them where they need to be. Um, do you guys play Sky at all? Do you think we're going to see more Sky? Is that laugh? Do you play so Sky? Insane. I stay away from these crazy <laughs> complex characters. Also, being a support me here, but I play Sky a few. Uh... She's definitely a fun character. One of the funnest, if not the funnest, character to play on the fold. Yeah. Just jumping around all the time. Um, yeah, but her C ability, her C ability, I like the changes. I feel like, you know, now you just can't press it and expect, you know, like, oh, they're all dead. You know, like, mm-hmm. put, you put a little more thought into how you're going to lay out your C ability. And it's just not, oh, I'm just going to press here. You know, okay. what's your yeah. so, yeah, I play Sky sometimes, and I usually lose because I'm not a good Sky player. So I'm trying to get the hang of her. Same. But I think anyone who's playing Sky and getting the hang of her, I don't think this is going to change her that much. And, you know, we're going to keep seeing her as people get better and better with her. She's going to all of a sudden be 
one of the strongest people, and then we're all going to be saying Sky OP, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, the next hero that got some changes was Pedal. Uh, continued oh, pedal. to tweak Pedal, and I think they may have finally got her to where she kind of needs to be now. She's, I think, like Sky, people are starting to get the hang of this new kit, uh, starting to understand uh, what it needs to do. Uh, but first off, her Munions, her Heroic Perk, uh, the basic attack speed from Consuming Sunlight, that's been increased a little bit. Uh, so they're going to be attacking faster and doing more damage because of that. Um, her Bramble Seed, seeds that she puts down on the ground, Seed Charges now uh, consist energy again, or are considered energy again, sorry. And the Munions will no longer steal non-heroes last hits when pedal has iron guard contract i believe that was in the same uh, ability before right yeah they, they they keep trying to tweak it because they think they find that it doesn't they, like they try it but it didn't work okay. so i think they're just trying to reiterate that they're still trying to make sure that that is a focus okay and the seeds still do explode and knock back enemies correct yes uh no i don't think the knockback is there anymore oh really okay so they do explode um uh, but Actually, no I'm, I'm not okay. sure. Did they remove the knockback from it? Um, I have to double check again. I, I one of the notes that we got during the beta testing was that the knockback didn't exist anymore, but that may have been that may have been re added, re Okay. All right, and then uh, her ultimate, the spontaneous combustion minions are no, no longer invincible while channeling. So, a Ringo or somebody who can quickly like crit a minion to get rid of them. Uh, that is back. So that's kind of nice, I guess. Um, no, that is nice. What do you... These pedal changes seem like just more just tweaky kind of changes, right? I feel like uh, pedal... Pedal for me, actually, in 1.10. I felt like, you know... I feel like she's like that thing... Your secret weapon. Because nobody sees a pedal usually in their day-to-day -day basis of playing Bangalore. Okay. That's the fact. Now... Jungle Petal is, uh, was actually pretty strong last patch. Uh, it was completely viable if you're not going against, like, say, a Rona that just jumps on top of you or something. But, like, for, like, when you're going against heroes like Glaive or Cruel, like the melee heroes that don't have, like, that gap, uh, gap, gapping ability. Yeah. Um, I feel like now she, she, she should be in a good place to even play in, in the lane. Uh, they did keep the crystal, the healing aspect of her ult, which is all, which was really good. I right. Really like that. So it's almost like a mini fountain, you know. <laughs> so I, I'm very excited to see how she's played, especially in the competitive scene, because I know they're gonna have something, something really good for her. So yeah. Yeah, you were yeah, starting to see her come out a little bit in some of those VGL games. Like people are just like almost a pocket pick for people now. Yeah, I still think pedal was weak in 1.10 compared to some of the other options you had. Like not weak, but not definitely not over or stronger than the other heroes. So you do see them just making at this point they seem to be making small changes, and I think that's a signal from them that they really wanted to get pretty much where it's at now. And so if it's just not there yet, they're just going to make small changes, not as drastic as when they completely revamped her kit. Right. Yeah, I didn't. I don't think I even played her in one point ten. Not just like you said, like there was just better picks. It wasn't because she wasn't good. It was like, oh well, I just didn't pick her. I don't know. <laughs> and I think it's gonna take a while for us to all relearn pedal. I know that I haven't touched pedal in so long that I wouldn't know how to play pedal at this point. Right, you gotta get in your your private matches or your your casual cues, and you know, yeah, absolutely. Guys, we might lose this. I'm picking pedal. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next up was Rona, who we all of a sudden everyone has realized that she is the most overpowered champion in the game at the moment <laughs> because of EGL. And... Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, that was oh. that happened. That happens so quickly where <laughs> next thing you know, everyone's banning Rona. And if you're not banning Rona, you're you're drafting to counter it. Yeah. Um, and we actually, um, and this is surprising to, to myself as well as everyone, that um, we actually um, 
the two games against Halcyon Hammers, they chose to go with the Rona, I think because they felt it was the best pick. Yeah. Um, and, and we were able to come out on top of that. And that was really surprised because I think Rona is a really, really strong hero. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I can tell you that I'm really excited about the smi the buffs that are ha or sorry, the nerfs that are happening because it was just getting annoying. Right, but yeah. those, but it, she became so popular maybe too late in the update. So there's these are like very small changes to her. Um, her rage decay uh, when she's out of combat is down from seven seconds to five seconds, and then on her foe splitter, uh, the first activation range gain rage gained down from uh, about forty at max level to twenty five. So it's almost halved across the board. Is that is that enough? Or are we still gonna see Rona? Was this kind of like a oh no, let's do something to Rona real quick? Like, <laughs> I mean, I think that what made Rona so strong was her barrier and her ability to be mobile and also be a, a, a bruiser. And I think that if that doesn't go away, uh, you're still gonna see people play Rona. And I still see people play Rona. I don't think that's gonna go away overnight. I think that this this is minor. These changes aren't huge. And I think you're gonna see them possibly make another nerf but it's funny to see how vgl can have such a huge impact on the devs and i think that you're going to see this weekend with the finals uh a kind of a testament to is rona back to where she should be or is she still really strong and that may result in additional changes sometime down in the future yeah and you realize how i guess kind of how small and close our vainglory community is because we saw rona and then like oh you get in the game after this it's like both sides have a Rona. Like, they don't, might not know how to play her, but she's on both teams now. Yeah. Uh, to me, Rona was like, she just got to to be like cruel at one point. Like, where you get two or three items, like, say, a breaking point or, like, Starblade or Serpent's Mask, and that and then just build pure defense. And yes. she was just around, and she would not go away. <laughs> Just she was just so annoying. Uh, so hard to take down. No. Yes, uh, and it was funny because when they had announced that they were nerfing Severance Mass, everybody thought like, "Oh, Rona's done. Well, Rona's done there's yeah. no reason to play her." But you know, they actually found out that Surfer Mass is actually still really good on her. So yeah, nice. So keep keep playing Rona. Keep mm -hmm. mastering her. She's another one of those heroes that I'm just not great at. I understand her, but for some reason, like I don't, I don't survive as long as everyone else does that I see. Yeah, <laughs> what am I doing wrong? Um, Celeste got a a little tweak. She got she kind of got a buff in this. Her solar storm damage uh, does fifty percent damage to structures, up from no damage. So mm -hmm. what was it uh, when she was first released? She could not damage uh, turrets. Could not damage uh, the vein crystal because you could just ultimate from across the map and you know okay. take down turrets without even going in the lane. But now we got that barrier on turrets, so it's a little harder to do that. Yeah. Uh, so this is, I think, could help her if her if she's out in base, if she died, maybe she spawns and her team is, you know, diving the turret or trying to take the turret real quick. She can she can alt it and help take that down so they can get out of there a little quicker. And I think that's awesome. That's a great change. I was. I was really glad when they had the, the the fix in there to not do damage to turrets because inevitably, you know, that would have been very, very strong and unfair. But the barrier is probably the best thing that's happened to Vainglory since the introduction of the game on turrets. It's yeah. really changed how strategies are played out, how you take down the turrets and how quickly you can you can push. It actually slows the game down. Yeah. But I really think this is a good call because it does allow Celeste to respawn and help her team maybe it's one more hit on that turret that solar storm is worth it i mean one you know one turret that's 500 or 300 gold and you really really want that pay you know if you need that payout that's that's worth it worth the uh, cooldown yeah definitely so. For sure. definitely uh so i don't think this will change the last too much she's a she's been still getting played quite a bit because that heliogenesis those uh explosions do quite a bit and they, they still do <laughs> uh next up kashka Got a bug fix. Uh, some people might have noticed uh, her basic attacks uh, were not uh, proccing right. So her empowered basic attacks had a longer cooldown than intended. Uh, that's fixed now. Uh, she'll now have that up and you know be more there more often. And I think this is going to kind of buff 
Kashka a bit. I think this was an unintentional buff to Kashka, this bug fix. Well, actually, I feel like, you know, Kashka, she, she went from being super OP to <laughs> nobody playing her. And then we're to the spot where she has been at, at, at uh, 1.10. And I feel like, you know, it was just her early game was just so good. Like, she was just definitely early game here. Uh, mm-hmm. And I, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm wondering how this is gonna go because with the with the changes on Rona now, she's not gonna be as strong as she was. So Rona and Kashka, they were like the two like, oh, they can actually go head to head, and you don't really know who's gonna come out on top. Sure. Okay. So um, now with this buff, or well, the unintentional buff. <laughs> sorry, but I feel like this is I probably gonna make her. Queen of the jungle again. Uh, okay. I, I saw someone talking that maybe we may see the return of Wayne Kashka now because she can get her uh, stacks up or. Uh, you know, I can uh, tell you we the- experienced that in Vertigo. Uh, Vaughn, the second match of Vaughn, that's exactly what they did, and that was brutal. Yeah, it's, it's scary because she gets, you know, what, five, Very six. Aggressive twirly death uh, buff empowered attacks there and it's like oh my gosh like those those hurt yeah and so she and she can clear lane quickly and then with the buff that she gets from that like rotate down very quickly very fast and that's the thing she can get in and out very quickly mm-hmm. and you know for for melee laners that's what you need that's what black feather has that's what taka has and so yeah i think that kosh goes in i think she's in a good spot right now i think she's really fairly balanced but she is, if you want to play that aggressive early game, she's your pick. She's the pick you want for that aggressive early game. Whereas if you're trying to stall it out, then you'd go somewhere else. And that's just something you keep in mind when you play. Is not all heroes are good at all times during the game. Right. Yes. Yeah. Next up is Finn, who's he's strong early game, but he is weak early game because he cannot catch up to anybody. <laughs> but if you want to fight him, he's pretty strong. Uh, he got a little bit of a buff, and I he's going to do some damage now. Uh, his quibble uh, is up uh, a little bit, not too much. It's up from like 205 at start to 230. And so a little bit of a buff across there, a little higher crystal ratio. Uh, and then the forced accord, his ultimate, you know, that th- the thing he throws out there and pulls the enemies into him, uh, that cooldown has been reduced quite a bit. Uh, it's oh, at yeah. 45 when it's overdriven or you got three points in there. 45 yeah. seconds that's pretty short uh what do you think about finn now beautiful <laughs> i think he's beautiful um i i they mentioned that they did this because of the changes they want finn to be played more and i went against an early game finn and it's not op strong but it's it feels like hey like this is a good support you know like mm-hmm. you know that damage that he's able to dish out early like you you have no boots and there's no way you can like really dodge the quibble uh i feel like you know it's it's kind of needed and it's not going to really affect him as he's going to be op now now the lane fin that has been uh, (laughs) thanks to shin yeah shin (laughs) (laughs) making everything work um i i feel like that could actually be better for like you know when he's in the lane, being able to clear better, okay, um, poke better. So, um, you guys mentioned like Sky is fun to play, and we talked about Black Feather being fun to play. I think Finn is also extremely fun to play. Like that's been like, I guess, the theme of the last fun here, the last few heroes. Like they just are great to play. Like win or lose. Like I played Finn. I walked around like you couldn't attack me. Mm-hmm. I was real slow. This is hilarious. <laughs> that resisted. Like, you're like, just makes you feel some type of way where you just can't be stunned. Like, yeah. So I think, I think that's an important thing. Um, I think especially for this game that's like on the go and maybe you only have like 15, 20 minutes for a game. Like you want maximum enjoyment out of that. So you're going to pick a hero like win or lose. Like if you're in a casual match, maybe like, I just had a good time. I learned something, you know, and, you know, it had fun. I think that's an important thing to think of. It's a game, at least. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, Fortress had one bug fix where his uh, wolves no longer get stuck on the platform. 
I never really saw this. So, meh. So it's yeah, a neither tweak. did I. Yeah. I was I don't think I ever used it very often like when I was on the platform. So <laughs> Uh, next up was Adagio. I think we've been mentioning Adagio this entire time. Uh, he got a little bit of buff. His Gift of Fire uh, is going to do more damage. That crystal ratio has been bumped up from 65% to 80%. Uh, this, his projectile speed has increased on both the Gift of Fire and the Agents of Wrath. Um, this is a very interesting change. Um, so you're basically going to be able to get your heals off faster. And your buffs yeah. off faster. And I don't know how fast increased is. Uh, <laughs> it could be a minor increase. It could be a major increase. But I think it was enough for them to know and to make the decision to do it. And, I mean, if you've played Adagio, and I've played Adagio, Josh has played a lot of Adagio. Okay. It, those projectiles are moved slowly. That heal is slow. And you're in a fight. You may be, you know, you may be a second off. It's not like a fountain where you press it and it starts healing immediately. Yeah. You've got to wait for that projectile to hit that hero before that heal right. takes take effect. So the projectile increase is a really big deal in team fights, and it kind of gives uh, it actually gives less skilled players a little bit easier time playing with Adagio because before you had to predict kind of where when you need to give that buff, uh, whether it's attack mm -hmm. or the heal. But now you've got a little more leeway, a little more time to forgive uh, a delay or a misclick, and I think that's good because I do know you need to make the hero accessible to all skill tiers. Right. Yes. Yeah. Um, me being a Dajio main for many patches, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm I'm very excited. And now I'm 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 happy I can pick a Dajio. People are like, "What are you doing?" You know, like, uh, okay. "Why are you picking a Dajio?" Like when there's you can play Arden. Everybody loves Arden, and um, I feel like now, especially with the going off of what Rob said, uh, the projectile, you know, the the decrease in the time it takes. I feel like that's going to be a big change in team fights. Uh, with Crystal Adagio as well as uh, Carry Adagio, mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, giving that B ability buff out to, say, like, a Black Feather who is chasing somebody, you can't reach out to him, you know? I feel like that's just it just makes all the difference in the world. Right, so especially Absolutely. if he's moving as fast as he's going to, and if you can't get it off because he, he moved out of range before it could happen. Like, so right. that'd be good. Uh, last year it was Arden. He had a bug fix as well, uh, where the Vanguard was in interacting incorrectly with Arden's Vanguard targets. Um, I saw someone mention, might have been Kel Degar, mentioning that this might have been a nerf an unintentional nerf to Arden, but I'm not sure how it was interacting incorrectly. I don't know if you guys know any more about this one. I think it was that when you vanguard a hero, if that hero takes damage, you're actually supposed to get uh, increased cooldown okay. or your time on your uh, B ability, Blood for Blood, gets decreased a little bit. And I think the bug was that this was not happening. Now, if I'm being told or if you're being told this is a nerf, then maybe it was the opposite. Maybe it was being reduced too much and they fixed that. But when I was told about this, it was that it was, in fact, a a fix to a bug where your cooldown was not reflective of your actual cooldown. Okay. All right. Let's we'll see how see how Arden's feeling. Um, I, I'm sure most people may not notice this bug fix at all. See, so fix most people unless you're playing, you know, up there in POA uh, Vanglorious tier. Then I'm sure you'll be like, yeah, this is a big change. <laughs> uh, but that's all the hero changes. We had a few item changes. Uh, Stormguard banner. The price came down. Uh, this is mm -hmm. that's that's huge. Price is down uh, by one hundred fifty gold. One hundred and fifty. Yeah. Uh, so it was at was it at two? Was at three hundred? Right. Um. It was. Uh. No. It was. So the the Iron Guard started oh, at three hundred, yeah. but Storm Guard Banner started at like eight nine. It was almost nine. No, it was hundred no, after you got the storm guard. Right? Oh yeah, it was like eleven fifty, twelve hundred. And so this reduction in gold is really big. If you're gonna go for this for your second or your second or third um tier two item. And they've completely redone how the passive works. It's an interesting structure. Um I'd I really want to sit down and look at it because I'm noticing that Super of America Corp is really creating a lot more complex rules to how things work. Sure, yeah. Especially because the Stormguard banner poop strat uh, yes. thing just became an issue. So they have to, I think this item will be something that will always be looked at for a little while. 
Uh, yeah. yeah, and you can tell that they're trying to create passives that aren't stackable across yeah. teammates. That, that that if there is a benefit somewhere down the road, that they can remove that benefit by making it so, for instance, that you only get gold if you, two people have Iron Guard contracts, only one of them gets the gold. Yeah. I mean, you can't play ARAM with Iron Guard contracts now because of that, but that was a decision they had to make because they really felt strongly that that was the solution to get rid of the poop strap was to make it so one person can do damage but not more than one person yeah. on a turret with that condition. Um, yeah, so this should be... I know when it became more expensive, I was not going for this as soon but now that may change and you know that 20 what deals 20 additional true damage per second to non-heroes uh that should be nice and 25 of his total damage applies towards heroes which is awesome too. so yeah so you'd be able to you know you might be able to you know kill some people now with that storm guard rather than just help clear your jungle very quickly <laughs> it would definitely help uh Reflex block had a small change where you can now activate it when you're stunned. And I think this was in a direct uh, comment on the stun comps that were out there. The Catherine Celeste jewel comps where you were one stun, it was yeah. over. <laughs> it was over. Uh, so it'd be interesting if you're fast enough to get off your reflex block or think about it rather than just like throw your phone down in disgust because you got ganked by the three stun cop. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you can get out of it. Yeah, and, and it's still going to require a lot of timing, but I think what they're doing is, is they're allowing the surprise element to be reduced just by a little bit because you can still you can still stun and slow and then try to throw another stun and maybe do multiple stuns, but what you can't do now is prevent them from responding. They, can get, they get at least one shot, and that shot might be to hit a reflex block. Uh -huh. Uh, then boots. You mentioned boots earlier. Uh, tier three boots. Uh, you're gonna. These are your travel. No. So these are all boots. All boots across the board had a change. Okay. Uh, travel boots. Out of speed combat. Uh, the delay and ramp up duration is down from five seconds to three seconds. Okay. And then uh, journey boots. The sprint cooldown down from fifty to thirty seconds. Um. I feel like uh, that journey boot, uh, the time of decrease now, that inspires people. Because a lot of people would end with the travel boots on. Like, you know, nobody really bought journey boots unless you're, like, super ahead mm -hmm. and you or you're Finn, you know, and you just, uh, or saw, and you're just, like, really slow naturally. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like it encourages people uh, to, you know, get those boots. Get the boots now. Get the boots. <laughs> Definitely. And I agree with him. I think 30 seconds is so fast. That's, I mean, 20 seconds is a long time in Vainglory. You can you can ace a team and take Kraken in that time. So sure. I think that they've really trying to make sure that you had that speed. I mean, there had to be an incentive to getting boots. And, it really, and they didn't want to, again, expand and complex the system by making it useful for, you know, uh, or, or changing things drastically uh, on how things worked here. But they really wanted to focus on speed and mobility for certain people. And I know, like, with Finn, this is going to be a big deal. Yeah. Um, having that extra speed. And um, and, I, and I'm, I'm curious about the out-of-combat speed boost, like, how big of an impact that's going to have. Um, and I would like to see, and I'm not sure if they've added this yet, but I'd like to see notifications somehow when you have that. It's never really clear. Like, I mean, you kind of know when you have it, but it would be cool to have some kind of visual cue. To help reaffirm, oh yeah, I've got this uh, this extra speed out of combat speed to let me, you know, and I don't want to lose it because I'm trying to get to another point, so maybe I'll be extra careful. Right, so maybe some sort of ring or color change around the boot icon just to let you know, like, yeah. this is this is happening, and like, you're out of combat or your combat thing is active. That could be nice. Absolutely. Maybe even something on the side with your, uh, like, where you have your uh, heroic perk set or something. Oh, yeah. Uh, other item, Aftershock, that price got reduced by 200 gold, which, again, is going to my point that I think Kashka is going to be pretty strong this patch. Aftershock. <laughs> oh, no. Aftershock oh. was always a, you know, Don't say that this. solid item on Kashka, and it being cheaper and her being able to get to it quicker is going to be nice. Yeah, and uh, I also feel like it's going to be very strong in box, as you guys know, that uh, the Aftershock box has been like the new craze. Uh, I feel like, especially since Vox is a laner, I feel like, you know, having that Aftershock a little bit earlier, it gives it almost the 
Ringo Tension Bow vibe with uh, Aftershock Lock, so... Okay. Nice. Definitely. Uh, then Light Armor and Shield, they're going to sell back value is down from 50 go 150 gold to 50 gold, which is nice. I'm sure people were building maybe like double Light Armors or double Light Shields early game just to survive in maybe some of those engages. So, you know, not having to lose so much money because you just... I just need to live, man. I didn't want to spend all this money. It'd be <laughs> nice. <laughs> no, this is the second time I think we've seen this where they've gone through and reduced sellback items. And uh, the purpose is quite clear. You know, there's strategies to uh, getting your spikes and getting your defense to those spikes mid game and early game. And I think that Super Mario Core just wanted to say, no, 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 no. That's kind of lame. That's kind of cheap. You know, buying. Buying these spike items and defense items real quick and then selling them uh, really shouldn't give you an advantage like it does. Or maybe it gives you a fight advantage, but it shouldn't allow you to keep your gold advantage yeah. because that can be very, very powerful. So I, I really think that was a smart idea to kind of desensitize it. But I do think that you'll still see people do it again because even when you're losing 100 gold versus uh, 50 yeah. gold, yeah. There's going to be times where you just you know if you have a little extra armor for that two minutes, you're going to win that fight and move on. Right. It's kind of the same idea. It's like, let's buy the infusion, hope we win this fight. Let's buy the armor to make sure we don't die, or light shield to make sure we don't die. So, uh, but those are all the, the hero changes and the balance changes. Uh, we got some awesome looking skins in this patch. We got a, the Vox Cloud Raider it's 2. It's actually. AKA, you know. Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> we got the Tier 3 Sawborg that looks... Uh, the particles on this are just amazing. Uh, and there's light coming out of him. Uh, but I think the, even the one I'm most excited for is this cruel Tier 3. Uh, this power slide and the smite with the fireworks looks awesome. You guys play? No, they all look great. Yeah, I've played with a few of them already uh, in the beta because they have those unlocked. And <laughs> it's... Um, there, the, the tier threes always seem to take a take a tier uh, or take the skin to the next level when it comes to animation, and as much as I wish they could do that with every skin, I know they can. So I, it's that's why you aspire to the tier three because it is really the full uh, envision um, or uh, uh, idea of how they envision that 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 skin working in the first place. Yeah. So um, yeah, I haven't played a lot with the cruel, but I did see the saw. And it was very, it was nice. Um, I was, I mean, it wasn't as impressive as like a Ringo. I still think Ringo Tier 3 is one of the best. Okay. But it is really, really good. And it's starting to grow on me. But uh, the Cruel, I haven't played a lot with the Cruel. So I haven't gotten to like look at all the nuances of the animation. But it does seem to be a very, very slick looking yeah. skin. I love when he dies. His uh, guitar stays in the air for a little while and like spins and then crashes to the ground. It's kind of like oh, a nice yeah. little touch. <laughs> Uh, so I'll probably be throwing down some ice, you know, supporting Super Evil here and, you know, picking up at least one, probably oh, all of these skins. <laughs> uh, and the last feature I want to mention, and probably a good one uh, for uh, Dragonborn, you and I to talk about, is this new friend feature. Uh, so I mentioned in a couple episodes ago how I'd love to see if we could know when someone is in a game, how long they were in a game, you know, because you get in there... And you're like, hey, that per everyone's in a game. All my all whole guild is in a game. Uh, no one's talking on ban. No one's talking online, Discord. Like, where is everyone? Oh, they're playing. Okay. Uh, did they right. just start? Or how do I know? So I'm just going to... I usually just start a game by myself. And then everyone's mad because I didn't wait for them or vice versa. Uh, but now you're going to have a way to know how long they've been in a game. Uh, you're going to have a little uh, notification there, a little icon there that says like, you know, one minute or five mm -hmm. minutes. And then if you click on them, you get to see if they're playing with somebody as well. As well, also the character. So you could be like, oh, Josh is playing Adagio. You know, this game's going to be over in like 12 <laughs> minutes because he is Adagio no. main. <laughs> so, uh, but then you can also uh, do a little uh, ask to play next. You get another button up there. So next to your guild, your team... You now have this play next feature. And what it does is you get to like, basically they're in a game, you can ask them, hey, can I play next with you? And then inside the game, you're in there, you get a little notification icon that you can click on and you get a little pop-up 
that shows like who asked to play. Like uh, in this example, they're showing cheesy yes to play, and you can check mark, you can say yes, or you can deny it. Mm -hmm. So this feature, I love the first part. I love being able to see how long someone is in a game for, and even who they're playing, and if they're in some in a party with somebody. Like that's great. The play next feature, I don't know if I'm in love with, and I feel like is going to get annoying for uh, especially people that stream and people with a lot of friends on their list. Oh yeah, uh, I w I want to say like the first thing I thought is like, oh, I made a mistake when I added all these people. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, I, oh. I had 44 friend requests because you know people can go to your guild. And then they will, they can yeah, add yeah, anybody yeah. off the roster. Like, ta, 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 ta. you know, the captain's getting picked. So you get that, you know, that question like, hey, are you guys open for a guild? You know, mm -hmm. can, can we join? And then I can just see it now. Like, there's going to be a lot. And Iraqi Zero, I feel sorry for you. You know, Shin. like. Shin. Yeah. <laughs> But their implementation is is nice because it doesn't really annoy you. It's just that number. And unless you're OCD and that has to be zero and you can't have a number there, you're just gonna probably ignore it. And I think it's I think it's nice. I think it's I think it's a feature that um, is probably gonna change as the game grows. Mm -hmm. And it's probably gonna turn into something a little bit more elaborate. But this is a very early idea of that specific feature. Um, because playing next and getting in parties is really, really good in certain circumstances. But in most of the time, especially if you're streaming or especially if you're very good and you're popular, that's going to be that's going to be a hassle. So I'd have to believe that Super Mario Corp has an idea of where they see that feature going, and maybe it's going to expand to more forms of communication in the game as we start to as the game grows and grows. Right. Matures. We did see that little uh, you know telephone icon. I didn't want to get too much into that. Um, <laughs> that was there, hidden really quickly, and I think we all can kind of assume what we think that's for. Uh, but it, again, this is all kind of tying into they have a vision of how they want communication to be in the game, and what they want it to be is limited. They want it to be minimal, and they realize that that's a good approach, but then there's still going to be that need, though, for team-to-team -team voice communication. Yeah. And I think you're going to see just for that, you're going to see them probably reopen it again. But it's going to be... Um... be yeah, it should be interesting. Uh, I feel like most of the time, I would, yeah, I'm would i going to either ignore this play request next because you do have a lot of people that come into your stream. They might be like brand new to the game, and they add up the people that they're seeing playing and if i don't know anything about them if it's like you know i love pizza 52 asked to play next i'm gonna hit deny but if it's maybe someone in the guild that i know their name yeah. uh, those would be the people that i would say yes to so i wonder if maybe down the line there's a way to like only allow starred friends to ask to play next or something like that yeah, I mean, I think they're expanding upon it, but without without like going too crazy with communication, they're trying to find that happy median of keeping your friends together. Because they like the guilds was a great way, you know, to keep your friends really really tight and you know play together. And now they've got to find a way. All right, what if you're not in a guild, but you just want to give a friend, or you meet someone, or you want to play with that person? How do you deal with that? And um, I don't know if this is I don't know if this is the golden fix or solution to that problem of playing with your friends. But I think it's a step in the direction they're going where you can interact with not chatting is not going to be the only way you can interact with people. Yeah. Uh, all right. So we'll, we'll see how this goes. This could, this could be great or it could fail. <laughs> We're going to see as soon as the servers are back on and more people are adding friends and uh, getting in there. Uh, but that pretty much does it for patch 1.11. Um, Again, we're getting some new features, we're getting more skins, and new heroes are always fun and really change up the game. So it's very exciting. And it came early. Guys, usually these patches drop, what, the first week of the month? And we're midway through this month, so does that mean we're going to need another patch here in two weeks? Like, after Thanksgiving? I, I don't... I don't know. It seems way too fast to drop a hero patch and then to drop another patch. Hero patches tend to be a little bit more uh, um, uh, difficult for them, as you were seeing right now, uh, to implement. So 
I, I don't know if you're going to see them drop another patch. I think they're really going to try to iron things out. Um, you know, they, they've kind of pulled away from the hero every month. And now we're getting to the point where it's a hero every other half month or, you know, every month, every yeah. month plus a half month plus a, maybe it's two months. And I think that um, they're trying to do that because it's just not feasible to to test and to to prepare a, a hero because it's going to change the, the the synergy of all the other heroes so quickly. Right. And with all these tournaments going on, the VGL, VIPL, they play on sometimes private servers, but you're practicing you don't have access to that all the time, so you might be practicing in game, and it really throws you off. So, uh, yeah, this hero's. I, I mean, I feel like uh, I, I off of what Rob said, I do agree with him, but I feel like there just has to be a, a winter season type of uh, update that will drop around Christmas time. Like, uh, just you know, I just I just can feel it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, snow themed map and snow themed map. You got us. Uh, your minions being like a snowball bit or something. Or okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can see it. So, uh, oh, very cool. Exciting. No snowballs. <laughs> no snowballs. <laughs> no snowballs. <laughs> I, uh, they do work really hard and we're really grateful as a community. I mean, even though like they had like a little long, uh, update day today, like for the service to go up and some problems, but I mean, you guys got to think about it. Like this is the middle of, November. Yeah. Like, they just dropped the patch. Like, <laughs> so this is crazy. And I, and I appreciate it a lot. They put a lot of work into this game. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I think uh, we've been streaming this one on Twitch, so if anyone's watching out there, thank you. And they're letting us know that the servers are back up, so I'm sure we, all three of us, want to jump in a game and uh, try some things out before we go to bed here. Uh, but before we get out of here, where can people... Find you guys, get in touch with Vertigo, all that good stuff. Well, um, I know for one on Twitter at Vertigo VG uh, is our Twitter handle there. We also have a website, uh, VertigoVG.com. Um, you can check out what's going on in our news article section and see what's up with Vertigo. And our biggest thing I want to say is our Vertigo open community on band. Like, that is just a a piece of art, you know. <laughs> I I feel like uh, being there, being able to talk to people every day, like meeting new people, just the whole community aspect, and it's moderated, and I feel like it's like a very good place to be for people that, you know, like Vertigo, like Vainglory, and want a topic to talk about. So, awesome. Love it. Check that out. Yes. And as I said at the beginning of the show, you can find me on Twitter as well at VG Dragonborn. But I wanted to give a quick shout out to Team Vertigo Black. Um, you know, great job making it to the VGL finals. But all the teams that played in VGL, I'm, I'm so excited that that the competitive scene's growing, and I don't know where it's going. You know, you see in the EU, it's shaping up to be. A, you know, extremely competitive, and you see met companies getting into it, and I just hope that comes its way to North America, and I hope it makes Vainglory extremely successful. Um, so I'm really excited, but good job, Vertigo Black, uh, yeah, nice. representing there. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I'll be back with episode 62. We'll talk more about the uh, SK Gaming and all that good stuff uh, here, you know, for everyone next week. Uh, but for now, if you want to follow Shadow the Vein on Twitter as well, at Shadow the Vein, uh, website is shadowthevein.com. All the episodes get posted there. There's YouTube videos, SoundCloud, links to the patch notes, everything we talk about, everyone's Twitter and websites and all that good stuff. So go over there and be sure to subscribe on iTunes if you're liking the podcast. More people subscribe, more people find the show, more people start playing Vainglory. And then you have more people to either join your guild or just to, you know, beat in casual queues and feel good about yourself. <laughs> uh, that'll do it for episode 61. Thanks for watching. Shatter the Vein.